Hi, students. Um, okay, so now it gets fun because now we're getting into some philosophy. What I want to do in this video is I want to talk about the first two arguments that I've assigned for you to read. Um, uh, the first one is William Paley's teleological argument. This is an argument for God's existence. Um, and then following that, you'll read David Hume's attack on the teleological argument. So um, these two, you know, they go really well together. Um, what you're going to see here is Paley making an argument and then Hume showing how that argument fails. Um, okay, so let me just say a few words about William Paley's argument. This is a very important argument historically. Um, it's very well known. And uh, later in our module, there's a section called Your Choice. And I've provided a number of options of uh, content for you to choose from. And, and some of that content will reference Paley's teleological argument because it's just, um, it's just very well known. Um, so the argument goes like this. Um, it, imagine you're walking across a meadow and you kick a stone. And by the way, um, philosophical arguments will often ask you to imagine something, you know, or to suppose. Sometimes we call this a thought experiment. Um, it, Paley's argument is often referred to as an argument by analogy because there's an, an analogy that he uses, and you'll see that in a second. Okay, so um, imagine you're walking across a field and you kick a stone. You, you, you would look at the stone and you, you wouldn't ask, who dropped the stone? Who made the stone? You, you probably wouldn't because the stone's just a lump of matter. It doesn't seem to have any kind of purpose. Um, just a sort of uh, crude, naturally occurring object. But if you were walking across a meadow and you uh, kicked something and looked down and saw um, a watch, that you had kicked a watch, you would immediately wonder, oh, who lost their watch? And you would immediately um, assume that the watch had had a maker, even if you didn't really articulate that, right? Um, we assume the watch has a maker because the watch has a complex structure which serves in fulfilling the watch's purpose, which is telling time. So the watch has complex structure, but not only that, it has a complex structure which serves a purpose. Um, the stone didn't have that. Okay, it turns out, and maybe Paley didn't know this, stones do have a complex structure. Um, you know, they're fascinating, but there's no clear purpose there, and it's not clear that the structure serves any kind of purpose. But with a watch, it's different. So with a watch, we assume there was a watchmaker, even though we didn't see the watchmaker. And Paley um, is addressing th this, uh, this worry, which is that why should we think there is a God if we have never seen one? So in his argument, he's addressing that. Here's why we should believe in God, even though we've never seen or touched or smelled you know, God through any of our five senses. Why? Because um, natural objects like... Um, trees and other plants, animals, or parts of, you know, like the human ear, for example, um, they all have complexity of structure which serves fulfillment of a purpose. You know, the, the leaves of plants are, are very complex and they allow the plant to photosynthesize and create food. Um, you know, the human ear is... Um, has complex structures which allow us to hear, and so on. So um, that's how the argument goes. And um, so then Hume comes along, and Hume um, attacks this argument by saying that, you know, look, Paley has drawn an analogy between um, the watch 
having a watchmaker um, and uh, natural things like trees and animals having a designer. Um, Hume doesn't think that that analogy uh, is believable and then he'll tell you why. So um, Hume is making an argument. Um, now I said this is argument evaluation, but when we do argument evaluation, we are at the same time making an argument. It's just that the goal of that argument is to show either that the argument we're evaluating succeeded or that it failed. So Hume's making an argument here and his conclusion is the teleological argument fails. So that's, that's his conclusion. Um, okay, well, I chose these two arguments because, you know, if we're doing philosophy about existence of a divine being, these are two really important arguments historically. Other people will refer to them. They're just really good to be aware of. And I also thought that these were good arguments for you to um, practice argument reconstruction for the first time. So um, that's what you'll be doing in the M1 Argument Reconstruction 1 assignment, is you'll be reconstructing these. So, um, you know, as you work through the materials I've provided on these arguments, yeah, think about how you would do the reconstruction. But um, you're probably, you know, going to need to read these two or three times in order to complete your, um, your assignment. Um, I just need to warn you, it's just very rare that you'll be able to read a piece of philosophy once and be done with it. We usually do have to reread. Um, I've tried to keep the readings short for that purpose. Um, okay. Good. Well, I just wanted to say a little bit about these first arguments before you encounter them. Um, do your best, you know, to understand them. When you turn in your reconstruction, you know, as long as it's on time or within the grace period, I'm going to give you feedback and you should read that feedback. And, and that is how you will um, then deepen your understanding of the, of the arguments and improve your argument reconstruction skills. Okay. So I'm asking you first, to try the reconstruction, just do your best. Then I can really see, one, how well did you understand the arguments? When I look at your reconstruction, that's the best way for me to tell how well you understood. Um, and then two, I'll see how you did with the reconstruction skill, and I'll give you feedback on that as well. Um, my uh, feedback on your work is a really important part of how I teach in the online forum, so please read it. If you turn in your work on time or by the end of the grace period, you're eligible to revise the work. Um, not the discussion posts, not the quizzes, but any other written work you can revise. And actually, I want you to plan on revising because when you turn something in, get my feedback, and then revise it, you learn so much more that way. And you will you know, not only have the chance of raising your score, but you're gonna um, you're gonna learn better and faster if you do that, and you know that's our goal is for you to learn really well. Um, so yes, again, please get your work in by the end of the grace period, and then please read my feedback and revise. Okay, great.